Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So good to have you here. In this Tokyo tour, we are going to look at multilingual translations for emails and notifications. Now, traditionally, translating emails has been um, kind of like, um, you know, kinda? How about, um, oh, it's not quite right either. Yes, translating emails has traditionally been just like this. Usually what people end up doing is creating separate notification records for each language. That means really complex conditions to figure out what the user that the notification is aimed at, what their language preference is, and it's absolutely hell when you're dealing with notifications that are event triggered, not condition triggered. The Tokyo release goes a long way to solve this with their multilingual translations for notifications. There are two methods available. There's a static method and a dynamic method, and we are going to explore both. So once you get static translation installed for notifications, but if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a new related list called translated notifications. Now I have a user named Davey Longshanks and he speaks pirate. And so I wanted to have a translation of this email into pirate. So we have this translated notification section and you can just create a new translation. I'm just gonna open the one that I've already created. And this is what the translated notification looks like. So it retains the same table as the original notification. It's got a link to the notification in this parent field. It obviously has the language that this is the translation for. And then you edit the subject and the message HTML. So I've even gone ahead and put a pirate picture in there as part of the translation. So when the email fires, this is what it looks like. And you might think that perhaps this did not succeed because if you read the subject and the message, it's gonna look like the, the English version or at least the language that your system is tuned for. And that's on purpose, I think. So it creates an email log record in the original notification language. And if we go, we see that the type is also send translation ready. So that way we know that it was actually translated. We're gonna jump into the record here. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we see this translated email contents tab. Let's click the record inside that translated email contents. And there we have the notification as we expect. Let's preview the email. And there I know that my translation was successful. Okay, so what if we needed to send an email in English, French, German, and Japanese, but we only had translated notifications for English, French, and German? That's where dynamic translation comes in. And dynamic translation is not new, but there's some things you can do to set it up for notifications to exploit your dynamic translation services. So if you're already customer using dynamic translation, this is an excellent way to squeeze more value out of that feature. Now, to utilize dynamic translation on a notification, all you have to do is come to this what will it contain tab and there'll be this enable dynamic translation checkbox and you click that and then that notification will be enabled for dynamic translation. What that means is it's first going to look up the static ones and so if I say this, this user's wants Japanese, what translations do we have available? And we see, oh, we only have pirate available. At that point, it's gonna call the dynamic translation service and get it translated into Japanese. Okay, some notes on setup, because this just doesn't come baked in. You need to do some plugins and system properties. I will have links in the description below, so you can go to the exact doc pages that describe this. For static translations, you have to have, make sure that this plugin is installed and you have to manually create this system property and set it to true. Only after that will this translated notifications tab become available on the notifications form. For dynamic translation on notifications, you need this plugin and you also need to create this system property and set it to true. You will also need to have a translation configuration set up and all that means for those customers that don't know, is that you have to basically subscribe to a translation service that ServiceNow will call out to when it needs a dynamic translation. You can learn more about that on the dynamic translation page in Docs, which will also be in the description. In all cases, the target for the notification 
has to be an active user. They have to have a valid email address and they also have to have a language preference set. One really cool point that I couldn't fit in anywhere else is that if you have a group that's receiving a notification, so long as that group doesn't have a specific email address and it's just notifying everybody within the group, it will obey all their language preferences and use either the static or the dynamic translations depending on the scenario. It's been a long time coming, but this is a huge step in the right direction for translating on the ServiceNow platform. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the email picture here.